This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This lesson is on using indexes. Now, an index is something that we can build on a database table. We can build it on column or columns on a database table. And the purpose of an index in a database is to speed up a query. It makes it easier to get information out. Now, we're already familiar with the concept of a primary key. I've got the authors table listed here. Let's bring it down a little bit. And the social security number is the primary key. So when we go look for that, behind the scenes, an index has been built on it that makes sure that it's unique for one, but it also puts it in some semblance of a sorted order. So it's very quick for the computer to figure out where that primary key is when we ask for it, when we ask for a specific value in a select statement. Now, an index is a little bit different than an index that you might have in a book. Let's talk about some of the differences. Most books have an index, but the table creator, that's you in this case, decides whether or not a column should be indexed or not. A reader would decide with a book whether they wanted to bother looking at the index. They look at the index if they need to look at the index. But the indexes that we build on a database, the, the system itself, the database management system, makes a decision itself on whether using an index is a good idea, if it'll speed up the query. Unlike a book, a table may have many indexes. A book is not likely to. Interestingly, since data in a database changes all the time in a real company or a real organization, these indexes have to be updated dynamically. If a column is indexed, such as the social security number here, the primary key, and we add a new social security number or we take one out, the indexes that are associated with that need to be updated on the fly so they're current. Now, indexes that we build in SQL are transparent. There's no way to see that. We don't deal with that in the select statement itself. We build an index object in the back end, and then we don't see it in the select. So let's go over and let's just look at an index real quick. This is a simple example. I'm going to pull it into the other window. Now, if I wanted to build an index on the last name field, this is because I think I'm going to be searching on a last name, or it's going to be used in a where clause somehow, I can build one. Now, the basic syntax is the word create, and now the word index instead of table. We've only created tables before. And then I give it a name. I get to make this up, but it's good to have a system. I use the table name, the column name, and then IDX to represent index. And I do it on the author table. It shouldn't be authors. It should be author. Likewise here, I'm going to put it on the last name. Now I'm going to select the author table right after that. Submit it. Well, it says it might have been successful, but there's nothing to see here in the data. Let's go back to PHP MyAdmin and let's look at the author table here. Look at the structure. We have a new index. We had the primary key before on the social security number. We can see that we have the author last name index that I just created on the last name column. Look at this column here. It says unique. Yes, on the primary key, but no, on the author's last name. We can create our own unique indexes, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Let's go back to the ones I'm looking at. I can put an index on more than one column, collectively together. One common thing to do is to index the last name and first name together, because they may be searched for that way. So I call this the author's full name index on the, should be the author table. Let's go ahead and copy that, put it in here, I'll submit it. Again, it says rows affected zero. It's kind of hard to tell just from this whether we've been successful or not. So let's go back to PHP My Admin, which is over here. And now I'm going to click on the author table again. So I have to go to the structure tab. We can see we have the full name index as well, and both columns are listed as a part of that index. So how about a unique index? I think a good candidate is in the book table. One thing we have here is the title. We really don't want a title to repeat. Now, why that can happen in the real world, 
we're not going to do it within one individual publishing house. So I'm going to make that unique. And if I look down here, I don't have that built yet. So let me show you how to do that. Here is the syntax. Create unique index book title on book. Let's go ahead and build that. I go over here. Don't really need to select anything. I'll just build the index. And now I'll go look at PHP My Admin. Click on it again. Click on the structure. And we can see that the book title index is there. And unique is yes. So if I try to insert a row into the table with the same exact name book, doesn't matter that it's part of the primary key. It's not going to allow it. That unique index will prevent duplicate values from going in. When we do a query on a table on an unindexed column, it has to do what they call a full table scan. It's going to look at every row. You know, are you the value I want? Are you the value I want? Are you the value I want? It's going to row after row. But when you have a column indexed, it's going to look at that index structure and try to more quickly get to where it needs to be. Again, if you think of an index in a book, when you want to find out where MySQL um, pattern matching is referred to, you look in the index for pattern matching or wildcard characters, and it points you to the pages in the book where you can find information about it. You don't have to read every page in the book. It's much quicker to use an index. The same thing is true with a database. So you don't want to index every column because there is a downside, as I mentioned. Every time a database is updated, those indexes need to be updated for all columns that are involved in an index. So that can slow you up if you have a lot of updating going on. Generally speaking, any columns used in a WHERE clause or in a search are good to index or join that we haven't learned how to do joins yet, but we will shortly. And those are great columns to put in an index. This ends the lesson on indexes.